हेलो हेलो
Hello. Uh, good morning, Hi. all of you. Uh, good morning, all of you. Good morning, sir. All of you audible training. Good morning, sir. Okay, thank you. Very good morning. Yes, is it my screen is visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Today we are going for a real actual syllabus second lecture. Actually, it is both lecture of mine, but as per our prescribed syllabus, it is my second lecture. So who was the yesterday's lecture? Dear all students, who was the yesterday's lecture? No voice. Sir, please explain uh, quick revision. Which one? Revision, sir. Again, can I do you? Are you absent for yesterday's class? No, sir, but a little, di little bit I confused in uh, yesterday's lecture. Which one? On, on which topic you get confused? One minute. Go to a PPT. Whatever I shared with that PPT, please you go to it. And where you get confused, please PPT write the number. PPT number four, sir. PPT number four. That is introduction to microprocessor components of microprocessor, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. We will uh, repeat that things. So, everyone get in? Okay, I admitted to everyone. Uh, many are waiting for admitting. Uh, please, is there any doubts from any other student? One of your friends is raising a voice on PPT number four, that is components of microprocessor. Is there, apart from this, is there any doubts with any other student? Please, you did study. If you done the study yesterday, then you have to make the points of doubtful points. Then you may raise the voice now about my previous lecture. Okay, fine. Uh, now I will start my lecture. <laughs> Once again, uh, I will good morning to one and all. So please, uh, all of you concentrate on the lecture now. So here, uh, first, uh, as per uh, your friends asked and out, uh, how to go through that first. So in the PPT number four, in the PPT number four, that is components of a uh, microprocessor. <coughs> so here, Actually, uh, the components, the components means, for example, what are the components of a computer? So, for example, what are the components of the computer? What you are saying components of a computer are nothing but all related to computers, like uh, keyboard is a one component, uh, mouse is a one component, monitor is a one component, speaker is a one component, printer is a one component. These are all very fair connected devices, which you have to say. These are the components, right? So, like that. In the microprocessor also, we have to say whatever the related things with the microprocessor chips and whatever the functionality is going to be happened with the microprocessor, those things we call it as components. So the functionality or working is going to be happened in a microprocessor. For that, what are the things we need? For that, we need a things of that CPU, which is containing arithmetic and logical units. So whatever the logical things is going to be perform a task, going to be to handle as per the instructions. That one is we have to say one of the component that is arithmetic and logical unit. 
the, it is a one of the processor that is automatic and logical uh, operations is going to be performed in that particular processor. That one we say it is a one of the component of microprocessor. And another component is so where you are going to do the to for, do for, for, perform to do the task that is in the memory. In the memory means what? The computer or the microprocessor chip, it is having a memory. For that, you have to store the data, store the information, do the manipulation, whatever as per the user is needful. As per the user is needful, you have to do the manipulation of the data. That data where you have to store is nothing but registers. In the way of register, you are storing a data in the microprocessor. That is one more component. <clears throat> and in that microprocessor as registers, how you have to store the data? You have to store the plenty of data, bulk data in a such a way that in the way of arrays. So why we have to use the word arrays? Because we have to store the data in a systematically manner without uh, wastage of any computer memory, any micro chips memory. Because in a very small size of memories, micro chip memories, lacks together books that much memory you are going to be stored it right so for that we have to take more care about do not wastage of memory in the microchip so for that we have to use that register array so and one more that is the main component whatever the automatic operations logical operations whatever performance tasks uh, to do in the microprocessor and all the management of the memory, it may be input output level. That one is going to be controlled by a controlled by a, for example, in a human being, what is the main control in it? The control in it is mind, right? So here the control in it, it is act as a control in it, act as a mind in a microprocessor chip. That one we have to say uh, control in it. So the entire these uh, things. These blocks automatic and logical register uh, register array and uh, that control units. All these including just simply we have to say these are the main components of uh, microprocessor chip. That is uh, microprocessor. So just this is for the introductions. Many components are coming later on. So actually. Uh, this entire first unit is only the introduction. The name itself of, itself of unit is a introduction to microprocessor. So that's what just you have to come to know the real picture and the entire that functionality working conditions you will going to study in sec, uh, third unit onwards. First unit, you just studied introduction. Second unit, you just studied instructions, instructions of microprocessor, first and second unit. Actual third unit onwards, you are going to study real functionality, that coding knowledge, that programming, all your lab concepts, you are going to be start with unit number third. So for that, unit number first, just you come to know what is microprocessor introduction. Second unit also, just you come to know the instructions. Some uh, 50 to 60 instructions are there. I will explain you in that time. So once you perfect in the unit number first and unit number second, next onwards you keep on understanding what is real microprocessor. Okay. So I think am I cleared? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, is there any more doubts with any other students? Please raise your voice. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, what is chip clock generator? Your voice is not clear. I'm not audible. You. What uh, is chip? what is chip clock generator? What is chip blows generator? Please, you text me a message through the WhatsApp. Okay. Sir. I didn't get you. Okay, sir. Okay.
I'm I'm waiting your text message, please. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to uh, ask the question, no, you you come, you have to be seated wherever the good network is available. You wherever the network is strong, uh, strength is good. That place you have to uh, sit it. It is easy uh, way to have the communications. Okay. So what is the a uh, chip clock generator? Uh, uh, yesterday also I explained a bit things about a uh, chip clock generator. Uh, maybe you are you are maybe not concentrated. Okay. So uh, see, a uh, clock. First of all, we have to use it for the clock generator. So the clock generator to maintain the uh, time. First of all, because nowadays time is very important. Uh, as I explained it in yesterday, uh, everywhere, wherever you have to go, your personal work or whatever the work in any of the office, uh, many uh, long queues is available nowadays. Okay, so if you have to enter, the, for example, enter the bank, you will not get it. Uh, you are all work within a, within five minutes. You you because there is a long queue is there, so you have to wait in the queue. And whenever your times your line comes, that time you go and get operated your task and you will get back right. So here, because in the olden days, uh, it was not a matter, but nowadays everyone is getting busy. So everyone is not wait for, uh, not ready to wait. So, so for example, uh, you have to observe in the mobile only. In the mobile only, if network is slow, that time the process is not going to be fast. Uh, that uh, <coughs> one uh, <coughs> circle is moving around, right? That is waiting for the process means buffering is going to be happen. So to avoid such kind of buffering, such kind of waiting, uh, such kind of delay, for that we have to use a clock generator actually. Actually the main functionality of the clock generator is to avoid the wastage of time and get it fast. Get it fast because in the microprocessor, it, everything is going to be happened in a micro state. Micro means 10 raised to minus six that much, slowest way, slowest time. Uh, that is uh, point zero 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 six means that six fraction time is going to be happen even we don't wait to that much time, fraction of the time also. For that reason, we have to use clock generator. So for the clock generator, we have to use along with the microprocessor to maintain the time delay, to avoid the time delay. So for that purpose, we are using a clock generator. So for the clock generator, clear idea. Clear idea, I will explain you in the unit of six of this uh, this uh, semester uh, this your subject at the unit of six i will explain you entire clock generator okay so there in that there are many types of clock generators also there but now for the first unit for the first unit as per introduction you just understand that the clock generator we have to use it for to avoid the time delay and going to be to do the past process is it okay Is it okay? Seven double three zero three. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, is there any more questions from other students? If no questions, then I'll move to my today's lecture. Yes, fine. Okay, some students are still waiting. So yesterday also I repeated, please all the students to make sure that we present within the time. Yes, I think I, I, I allowed everyone to admit, yes, fine. Now you will need to get admitted. So, okay. So today's strength is good, a little bit good for compared to yesterday's, but always you have to maintain a good strength. That's fine. And now, Now I have to start with uh, my lecture. Yes, all of you come with this lecture. Okay, that's, that's fine. So again, uh, today's, see, just to again one, one uh, just a minute, I have to uh, go through the yesterday topics. In the yesterday's topics, I have to cover uh, that just to the brief introduction about the, uh, that microprocessor. In that, the components I, of the microprocessor I covered, after that, I covered a uh, bus system, a system bus in that data bus, uh, the address bus and control bus we covered. And also we covered 
that um, uh, system was how we are going to be connected with all the components of microprocessor and along with that uh, features of uh, <coughs> microprocessor we covered yesterday so minimum uh, 10 to 12 points uh, i given features of microprocessor so whenever the question is asked about the features uh, if you go through all the 12 points and each one one points minimum two to three line you have to explain so almost 12 points means each point is three lines means minimum 35 to 36 lines you are going to be explained that is more than enough for that okay so today's uh, i will go through pin diagram so in the first lecture uh, one of the student is asking me what is uh, so please explain pin diagram of microprocessor so today your time is comes now i am going to explain the pin diagram uh, <coughs> the pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor same way in the second unit you are going to study the pin diagram of 8086 also in the unit number second but today for the unit number first you are going to be study that is 8085 microprocessor uh, pin diagrams so just now we'll go to that slide Okay, this is the features. All 12 points, please you go through it. So next, <laughs> today's, that is introduction to microprocessor. <coughs> In that, we are going to study a pin diagram. Sometimes we have to say pin configuration of 8085 microprocessor. So as you see in the screen, here I have to mention that is 8085 microprocessor chip. This is entire 8085 microprocessor chip. So in this, you have to count at the left side 1 to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 20 pins are there. Same way at the right side of the chip, again 20 pins are there. That is from 21 to 40. So here 20, here 20. Totally uh, 40 pins uh, I, <coughs> microprocessor 8085 chip is there. <coughs> so even uh, yesterday's uh, I got one question that is why it is 40 pin only. So please remember that as per our requirement, as per designer requirement, he has to get satisfied with all these 40 pins that's what they have to prepare 40 pins 8085 it is not only a restricted to 40 pins if any other some more functionality working things is need that time some more pins also you have to add you have to implement and you have to add and you have to start with the functionality of uh, that is microprocessor 8085 okay so as per um, Whatever in the olden days, they have to design, they have to prescribe with the 40 pins. That is your syllabus. That's what we are going to study. It means that it is only 40 pins only. It is wrong. So it may be a, uh, 24 pins also available. It may be 64 pins also available, 32 pins also available. But as per your syllabus, you are going to study that is 40 pin 8085 microprocessor. Okay. So in this, so this is entire pin configuration. All of you go and practice in your home. So all the pins, serially all the pins. And this pin is, so for example, the pin number one, we have to use it for X1. Pin number two, we have to use it for X2. Like that, pin number one, two, pin number 40. <coughs> Each pin, what is the purpose? What is the use? That is, we have to go into study now, one by one. So here, <coughs> Uh, for that, uh, so in this diagram also you have to carry, otherwise some other programs, uh, uh, diagram I'll give you in the next slide. So th this slide is same with this slide. So here, pin diagram of 8085, here also signal groups. So this is the pin configuration. As per pin configuration, you have to go with the signal uh, groups. So first we have to cover, <coughs> that is a pin configuration, okay. So for this pin configuration, I will make you clear nodes. So today I will open that nodes. Uh, just a minute. I'll open that nodes first. Okay. 
Yes, fine. Again, some students are waiting in the waiting room. Okay, listen here, students. Already you, you are not sure, get ready. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, come this up to this point, so we have to explain yesterday's. Now, today we have to go in this one. <clears throat> as fine. This is your pin diagram. How many pins? Totally 40 pins. First pin is X1, X2. Third pin, uh, we set out. Fourth pin, uh, serial output data, serial input data, five. This is a trap interrupts that is RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, and the interrupts and that interrupt acknowledgement. So these are the data lines AD 0 to AD 7. These are the address data lines. Totally eight lines are there from uh, 12 pin to 19 pins. So AD 0 to AD 7 means totally eight pins of address data lines. And this is used for VSS means power supply that is going to be connected to ground. This is 20th pin is always going to be connected to ground. And that 40th pin, 40th pin is connected to be plus five volt. So in the yesterday's characteristics you saw that, we have to use it for the microprocessor, five volt power supply. So in the 40 pins, we have to connect it positive five volt. And in the 20th pin, we are going to connect uh, that is negative uh, side means it's a ground, okay. So here in the 21 pin to 28, again, we have to use address lines. That is A8 uh, to A15 means again here, eight pins, 21 to 26. That is A8, A9, A10, A11, A12, A13, A14, and A15. All these are used for address lines. So these are used for address data lines. Okay, these are only for address purpose. And we have to use the serial uh, S0, that is for the signal clock. S0, we have to use it. Here we have to use the ALE and right. Uh, that is the 13th pin is ALE. 31 pin right we are going to use. And in the read, that is read, we are going to use at 32 pin. So 33 pin is a S0. Here it is S1 for the clock purpose we are using. And also, 35, uh, that is 34. That is input and output for the memory manipulation, 35 ready state and 36 that is going to be a reset in and 37 for the clock. So this clock generator, what you are asking, this one clearly I have to explain you in the six, enter your six is based on that clock generator only. Okay. So here 37, we have to use the clock and that is 38, we have to use OHLDA means hold acknowledgement. It is for the hold acknowledgement and 39 is hold. So now I will make you clear notes for explanation of each and your pins. Now we'll come to the explanation of this entire. Just to keep remember, this 8085 having a 40 pins. All pins are <coughs> available in this. Now we will go by one by one. So here, uh, see, this is also correct. It is also you have to draw, either this one also you have to draw. Both are same, both you will get a marks, no problem. So this is signal groups. Once we extend all these pins, next we'll go to this. So here, that is a pin, 8085 microprocessor, uh, into the groups of timings can be, we have to explain. So first one, I am going to explain uh, address bus. In that address bus, uh, we, we have to explain in yesterday, right? So same address bus, how we are going to be used in the, 8085 40 pin microprocessor. So address bus. Address bus. Here I have to clear the number of pins. So number of pins 21 to 28. Number of pins 21 to 28. Where it is? So here that is 21 to <coughs> 28. Clearly it is available, right? So what is that 21 to 28? There, those are the address bus. It means that. A8, A9, A10, A11, A12, A13, A14, A15. Which address lines are address bus. We have to use it. So here, A15. So A8 to A15. As the diagram, A8 to A15. These are used for to carry the most significant 8 bits. 
because the main features of 8085 is that is 8 bit so that carries the most significant most significant of 8 bits of a memory io address of a memory io address that is the functionality of pin number 21 to pin number 28 that is the address bus pin number 21 to pin number 28 that is the address bus okay so I, I'm keep on explaining. Did you just open uh, in your uh, system machine? You just open that pin configuration. Make a slide to enable pin configuration. So keep on. I'm explaining. You easily come to know which uh, pin number is. What is the main functionality? Okay. So here, 21 to 28 pins. All eight pins we are used for to carry the most significant eight bit memory I/O address, input output address. Okay. So next one, the data bus. One is address bus, that is A8 to A15, which is present in the 21 to 28 pin number. Next is data bus, that is AD. So that is here in the diagram. These, so these are the address bus, and these are the data bus. That is AD0 to AD7. It means that pin number 12 to pin number 19. Pin number 12 to pin number 19, these are the address bus. So these address bus, because there are totally three bus, right? Address bus, data bus, and control bus. So address bus is, that is A15 to A8. It means that 21 to 28. Next is data bus. So in the data bus, these are used with the pin for pin number 12 to pin number 19. That is AD0 to AD7. Total eight pins. These are the carries at least significant bit address and data bus. Previous, previous one is memory and ad, uh, input output address, but here in the data bus, it is for the address signed data bus. Okay. So next one is control bus. In the control bus, so we have to use it for three way because we are going to control on, only the read option. We are going to control uh, only the write operation and we are going to control that is uh, ALE option also. So here, uh, in the read and write, that is bit number 32. Go to pin configuration, that is uh, 32 pin. Where is pin? This is a 32 pin, right? 32 pin is for RD. So in this, that is a 32 pin. So this signal indicates that it is selected input output all the memory device because it is going to be controlled. That is selecting of the memory is going to be controlled. That's what that is comes under the control bus. That is RD. That is read. Uh, Signal indicates that it selects input and output all memory device to the read and is uh, and is ready for accepting data available on the data bus. Okay, and next one the pin number thirty one. So we have to use it for write control in the pin configuration. That is pin number thirty one. That is the WR. It is nothing but write control. So in this signal indicates that the data on the data bus data on the data bus is to be written into a selected memory or uh, input output locations okay so this is the functionality of pin number 31 and the next one we have to use it for ale so just i'll check it what is ale uh, Okay. So the Yale is the debut. It is a address line uh, address latch enable. So Yale means. So if you are going to be uh, send any data to a particular location, that uh, location is going to be made as a active. So that is uh, address latch enable, make that is enable. So which pin is going to be uh, controlled? That is 30th pin. So in this diagram, that is the 30th pin is going to be AAD. So this one is going to be controlled. That's the address control of the, to send the data. So it is a positive going pulse generated fan. A uh, new operation is started by the microprocessor. When the pulse goes high, it indicates address. Okay, it indicates address, 
and when the pulse goes down it indicates a data at the side data it is going to be the ale is which is going to be to recognize as it is a data or it is a address both it is going to be controlled by ale at the pin number 38 so next so these are about uh, 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 that is a uh, bus bus system so in the bus systems what we studied a8 to a15 that is the pin number 21 to 28 those are the address bus and in the pin number uh, 19 uh, 12 to 19 these are the data bus and in the pin number 32 31 33 these three are control bus so here 8 here 8 and these three 16 plus 3 19 pins i have to cover okay now out of 40 19 pins okay 8 plus here 8 plus and these three means total 19 pins i have to cover next we will move upon io volume that is input and output memory at the pin number 34 at the pin number 34 check it pin number 34 so here pin number 34 that is io means input and output or memory so what it will do what is the functionality in this the signal is used to differentiate between input and output memory operations and when it is high whenever this pin is going to be high so that indicates io operations and whenever it is low that indicates memory operations so uh, the pin number 34 is the 8085 what it will uh, indicates whenever it is going to be high so because the microprocessor is only knows two binary numbers zero and one zero means low one means high or active and passive okay so here whenever this 34 pins is become a high that time it will what the manual people do it will op uh, do the io operations input and output operations if this pin is low means zero then it will uh, indicate that that the memory operation so one is the memory operations one is the input and output operations that is going to be recognized by pin number 34 so next the pin number 33 and pin number 29 so this in the diagram so see here pin number 33 and pin number 29 so 33 is s1 and pin number 29 is s0 so s1 and s0 what we it will do so in the s1 33 s0 is 29 these signals are used to identify the type of current operations these signals are used to identify the type of current operation the type of current operation means either it is a read operation or it is a write operation or it may be a input and output operations or it may be a uh, memory operations like that it is going to be differentiated so what what pins it will do that is pin number 33 and pin number 29 so pin number 29 is nothing but s0 and pin number 33 is nothing but s1 okay so next i will move upon power supply so in this uh, every microprocessor chips every logic design uh, integrated circuit chips they need power supply right so in that uh, in the microprocessor 8085 you are going to be uh, you are going to be uh, connect with the power supply of 5 volt that is dc supply 5 volt dc supply so here uh, in the power supply the, those pins are 40 and those pins are 20 so 20 is for uh, for negative power supply and 40 pins is for positive power supply in the diagram so this vss is a negative power supply at the pin number 20 and in vcc you are going to connect it at the pin number 40 that is a plus 5 volt so here yeah, that power supply uh, signals with the vcc of uh, 40 pins and VSS of 50 pins. So we have to indicate that that is the connection of plus 5 volt to the 40 pins and that negative 5 volts to the VCC to the ground signal. So in, these are the 40 and 50, uh, 20 pins of 8085. So next, here we have to use one clock signals. We have to use, uh, you know, uh, 8085 microprocessor. Totally, we have to use three clock signals. Those three clock signals are X1, X2, and clock out. 
So come to the diagram. So in the diagram, that is x1, pin number 1, x2, pin number 2. x1, x2, pin number 2. And here one clock, that is the pin number 37. At the pin number 37 and pin number 1 and 2, you are going to connect a clock signals. So that is pin number 1, x1, pin number 2, x2, and pin number 37, a clock out. So here in the X1 and X2, these are the clocks. So some of the students are asking clock generators. So just a brief idea, one or two sentiments idea. Now I'll explain you. So in the clock generator, that is X1, pin number one, and X2, pin number two, that is a crystal. Uh, that is RC means what? Register, inductor, networks. He is connected at these two pins. So all the... Uh, register inductance and networks is going to be connected with the X1 and X2 for to reduce the timing uh, delay. So in that, these two pins are used to set frequency of the internal clock generator. Frequency, these two uh, pins are used to set the frequency uh, of the internal clock generator and this frequency is internally divided by two. Why it is divided by two? Because X1 and X2 two are there. So you have to divide it by two means you have to get the actual clock generator value and you will get a time consistent in the working functionality of k 85 And one more that is a clock out at the pin number 37. At the pin number 37, clock out is there. In this, this signal is used as the system clock for devices and connected with the microprocessor. So this is used for the system clock X1 and X2 are used for clock generator and the clock out is used for the system clock uh, that device is connected with the microprocessor. So, okay. So, these are, uh, these three are the clock signals. Those three are the clock signals. Next, I will go to the interrupts and uh, externally initiated signals. So, in the interrupts, again, there are six types. Those are INTA to the pin number 11, reset in to the pin number 36, reset out to the pin number 3, uh, ready with the pin number 35, hold with the pin number 39, and HLDA with the pin number 38, and hold acknowledgement. HLDA means we call it as the hold acknowledgements. So you have to check it in the pin diagram. INDA uh, is 11, reset is 36. So at the pin number 11, INDA is there. At the pin number 36, that is reset in is there. Okay these pins so in that so INTA it is a interrupt acknowledgement while we have to send a acknowledgement of the interrupts uh, this interrupt is comes in the unit of seven in that total that interrupt spots we have to explain in the unit number seven but just this level number pin of the AJ85 is used for interrupt acknowledgement and that reset pin of the 36 uh, pin we have to use it for uh, to reset the microprocessor by setting the diagram counter to zero. Uh, means we are going to reset. Reset means what? That counter is going to be zero and start with the initial state. So next one, the reset out at the pin number three. Check it at the pin number three. That is the reset out. So in this reset out is used for, uh, uh, it is used to reset all the connected devices whenever the microprocessor is reset. So whenever that microprocessor is reset with the pin number 36 and it is reconnected all the devices with the microprocessor chip. So next at the pin number 35, it's a ready, RD means ready. So this signal indicates that the device is ready to send the all to receive the data. What is the meaning of ready? That is the pin number 35. So this is the pin number 35 is a ready. So it means that it is going to be decide either whether the data is going to be received or transmit. So ready, that is the data is send or receive the data. If ready is low, then the CPU has to wait for ready to go high. Whenever it is go high, that time the data is going to be received it. Whenever it is low, at that time the data is going to be sent it. Okay, that is the functionality of pin number 35. And the pin number 39, that is a hold. Uh, if this signal indicates that either another master is requesting or some other other master is requesting 
uh, that is the use of the address and the data buses. So that is going to be checked by the pin number 39 that we call it as hold. So in the pin number 38, check it, pin number 39 and pin number 38. Pin number 39 is hold, pin number 38 is hold acknowledgement. So here in the pin number 38, that is hold acknowledgement is indicates the CPU has received the hold request and it will uh, relinquish that uh, the bus uh, in the next cycle clock. So the hold acknowledgement is set to low after the hold signal is going to be removed. So this hold acknowledgement is act along with the hold that is with the pin number 39. So pin number 39 and pin number 38, these are hold and hold acknowledgement purpose. So these all six are we have to say interrupt sign externally initiated signals. So, so all those interrupt signals is we are going to be functionality in the e 5 microprocessor. So next, the last that is serial. So what are remaining? Only remaining is pin number four and five. So let's check it. Only pin number four and five remaining all I have to explain, right? So that is trap I have to explain uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, one, two, three, I explained it. Uh, again, seven, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 11, uh, 12, I explained it, 12 to 19, that is the address lines, sorry, data lines, and this is the 20th explained it, 21 to 28 explained it, 29 explained it, 20, 31, 32, 33, 34, all I have to explain only except these three, four and five. So now I will go to pin number four and five, so in the pin number four and five, these we call it as serial input and output signals. That is serial output data, serial input data. Okay, so here there are two types in there. That is SID and SOD, serial input data and serial output data. <coughs> so here, the serial uh, output data that is used for the pin number four, which is used for <coughs> the output, uh, serial output data is set or reset as is specified by <coughs> serial input memory. <coughs> that is SIM card, you have to say, you know, in the SIM card, that is a set interrupt bus. So that set interrupt bus is going to be connected with your SOD of that is serial output data with the pin number 4 of 8085. So in the pin number 5, that is read interrupt mask you are going to be connected. So here in the serial input data, that is the uh, data on the line is loaded into the accumulator. There's a line is loaded into the accumulator. Whenever the rim, so SIM and rim, rim means that is a read interrupt mask. So whatever you have to use it in your mobile, that is SIM, right? You have to understand what is the SIM. SIM is nothing but set interrupt mask. And one more rim is there. So you, you are not heard this word, but it is automatically internally that reading is going to be happening. So that one we call it as read interrupt mask at the pin number five. So that is in the data line is loaded uh, into the accumulator whenever that read interrupt mask instructions is executed. So this one, uh, all these all are uh, functionality of each pins in the microprocessor. 8085. So along with this 8085, uh, as once you come to know this 8085, all the functionalities, please check it. Anyone is remaining in this? Can I cover all the pins, all 40 pins? Check it. Anyone is remaining? Please tell me. X1 is covered, X2 is covered, reset out covered, SOD covered, SID covered. These are the serial inputs. RAM covered, RST is covered, RST all series, three series covered, INT are covered, INT internet acknowledgement is covered, all these address uh, data uh, address lines covered, that is data lines, and this one is covered. These are the address bus we covered, uh, yes, not covered, ALE covered, write, read, uh, that S1 is covered, input output memory, ready state, reset in, clock out, Hold acknowledgement, hold and power supply plus point. All pins we cover. So please, uh, in this, in this, what I instruct to you. Once you come to know this pin diagram clearly. So today's what is your main work? You go and study 
which pin is used for what and what is the functionality of a particular pin so this one you are going to please study so for next coming onwards second unit onwards if you know the pin configuration particular pin is used for what purpose and what is the name of particular pin if you really know then only you are easily understand in second unit onwards topics so for that please i will advise you go through this pin configuration go through this pin configuration and each and every pin you have to uh, remember the name each and every pin name you have to remember and all those pins working functionality you must and should know if you know this much this entire microprocessor become so easy because later on some coding part and all all the working and manipulation functionality that is depends upon this pin configuration only okay so dear all students how how you feel now because at the first class only uh, someone are asking pin configurations so now i cleared your doubts today's lecture that time i said i am going to explain whenever that time comes so today's lecture i have to explain all the pin configurations of 8085 if you are not understand anything please ask me <clears throat> so this is uh so th this point today i have to cover this point that is pin diagram or pin configuration of 8085 microprocessor totally all 40 pins i have to cover now please recall it please check it pin diagram anything is remaining want to explain sir so, can we exchange the position of pins which one a position of pins position of pin can we exchange so position of pin means what actually i i don't get you hello hello please dear student position of pin means in that what you want please Sir, am i audible you... yeah can we exchange position you don't exchange position you don't exchange positions because the implementer will do what he they done particular pins is used for particular functionality you don't go for example if there is a serial input and output are there these two pin number 4 and 5 you don't take pin number 5 as a serial output you don't take pin number 4 as a serial input exchange is not possible these are fixed the inventor the implementer already they implemented in such a way that for you have to going to use for this purpose only that is static please don't exchange any pin number for example if the pin number 35 ready is there you have to use it for ready purpose that is going to be either going to be data is received or going to be data is sent you have to use this pin number only 35 only exchanging offer is not allowed okay <clears throat> yes is there any more question please are you going to what i said I didn't get any voice. Okay, I think I I cleared you. Exchanging is not possible. That particular pin you have to use it for that particular name with that particular functionality. Okay, uh, is there any more question? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Uh, so that uh, number 40 ping VCC is holding five volt potential power supply. Uh, how much one microprocessor can hold maximum power supply, sir? That is maximum five volt only. So because uh, in that characteristics, in that uh, that features of microprocessor, in the second points I have to mention here, right? Operate that operates on a single five volt DC supply only. Not upper to is not possible because that capacity is 5 volt only. If you have to use it more volt, that chip is going to be burned. That chip is going to be short circuited. If it is less volt, then it is not sufficient supply of power. The chip is not, may not going to be work correctly. Okay, sir. Yeah, is there any more question? Is there any more question on this pin configuration? <clears throat> so please all of you be perfect with this. The entire your microprocessor is depends upon this chip only. So that's why feel free to ask a questions on this. You no need to go and study in the home. You make perfect in my lecturing only. In my class only you make perfect. So again, I'm waiting. Please, any questions on this? Sir, explain reset out. Reset out. Okay, that is the pin number three, right? So this is the reset out and reset in is also we have to use the pin number 36. So pin number 36 and pin number 33, we have to use it for reset purpose. So here, There is that 33 and 4. Uh -huh. Pin number. Okay. Pin number 3 is the reset out. Pin number uh, 36 is the reset in. <coughs> so, in this pin number 36, first time I explain you reset in. Then you come to know reset out. So in this signal, uh, the microprocessor is setting the program counter to zero. So see, in your mobile, uh, just I'll give a one real world example. If your mobile is uh, sometimes it is happening a hanging or uh, restarted or whatever, it may be a, a not in a proper manner working. That time what you are going to be doing? You are going to be uh, for a setting. In that setting, you are going to reset mode. So in that, you have to reset it. So once you have to reset means, again, all the uh, apps, whatever is there, they are get resetted and started from the initial uh, conditions, right? So it means that something hampering occurs. That time you are going to be reset. It means that you are coming. So you have to use the clock, uh, clock signals, right? In your uh, digital uh, logic design or digital electronics. So you have to make that a reset means, again, you come up with the beginning. Reset means you come up with the beginning. So for that, we have to use it in a microprocessor 36 uh, pin. So once you have to reset, up to that, if the signal is used to reset all the connected device, so you already have to reset it all the connected device, when the microprocessor is reset. So in this microprocessor, for example, if you are going to reset your WhatsApp, so your WhatsApp, after that, if you have uh, start up your WhatsApp, uh, after started, it will ask either deny, deny or allow, yes or no. So that is the main condition comes from your reset out. After reset in, again, you start the same app, same working functionality of the microprocessor user 5 that time again, it is asking, you are going to be reset out. Because next, either you are allowed or not, it is asking your permission. That's what we have to use it for. Reset out. Always it is only happening up to the reset in. That's what I have to mention. Uh, in this signal, is used to reset all the connected devices. Reset all the connected devices when the microprocessor is reset. Microprocessor is reset. That's what I have to use this sentence clearly. Got it? Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any more question about this diagram? Is there any more question, please? 
make you perfect year only you be concentrated on the class and make you perfect year only so today i i will i'll send you this notes this entire uh, clear notes i'll send you and previous topics whatever i covered so that features i covered and some more extra points also i have to added here and i covered that microprocessor uh, bus systems that explanations also i have to given here and uh, i covered that uh, system bus in the system bus that text uh, notes is also i have to use the address bus data bus and control bus and uh, components also i have to clearly explain gallery yeah please please make you mute please make you mute if you have any question then only have to mic on and ask you unmute and ask if no questions please make you mute it get disturbance to whole class okay yeah fine so this also i have to prepare all the notes from beginning that introductions definitions introductions and all the components uh, in that components i have to clearly explain it and system bus with this diagram and all the explanations address bus data bus control bus and that bus system with that explanations i have to given you future future also notes i given you and today's configurations that configuration explanations clearly i have to made you so this one i will send you today so is there any doubts please if no doubts then i will move to next topic architecture of 8085 so now it's 10 15 25 i will give you again one or two minutes please discuss with me dear students i need feed from you hello sir <laughs> yeah any question Uh, sir what is that uh, frequency of internal clock generator frequency of internal clock generator see uh, you have to use the frequency uh, from 500 to 500 uh, hertz to uh, 3000 megahertz based on the range i will tell you in that time that i i think majority of the asking only the questions on frequency and clock <laughs> more you are more interested with this okay no problem <coughs> that uh, frequency uh, we have to use 300 500 hertz to 3000 megahertz in based on the uh, capacity of input and output you have to use it. so that all things i will explain you in the in it number 6 so if whenever that time comes if we have to explain in that time only that time the test is different the understanding test is different so that's what i make you how much you need full for first model first unit i'll explain you no how to but whenever i the thing is uh, sometimes it is happening always you are too advanced <laughs> you are asking whatever i am not covered Okay, no problem. But asking habit is too, so so good. Uh, I appreciate you. So that uh, for a particular functionality, uh, how much range of frequency we have to use? That one I will explain you in the unit number six. Unit number six is totally for clock generator frequency and that working function of uh, working range of each pins. We will explain you in that time. Okay, each and every thing. So that frequency now you have to uh, remember that five hundred to Three thousand megahertz. We have to use based on our needful range. It may be a thousand hertz. It may be a thousand megahertz, two thousand megahertz, as per our requirement. Okay. Yes, sir. And you yesterday told about sharing or uh, transistor videos. So transistor on single chip. Yeah, transistor of single chip. What happened? You are going to share with us, sir. Yesterday you told about it. Uh, which slide you are saying? Uh, can you remember the slide? I think seven, sir. Seven one. In that seven one. Okay, where is that seven one transistor? That is six thousand two hundred transistor. Point, sir. Yeah, six thousand two hundred transistor. See, frequency is different. Transistor is different. This is the number of transistor. It is not a frequency. Okay. 
actually what is your question is it your question is on what is the frequency or is it your question is on what is the transistor no sir uh, i'm i'm telling about you are going to share with us the video of transistor on single chip transistor on single chip yes so on single chip you may use the 6200 transistor Yeah, are you anyone going to chat? Now I'll check a message. Wait. Uh, and what is its work? Okay, one question I got here. Uh, I think I cleared you all. Still, you have doubts, please. That the uh, transistor who is asking. Uh. So what to do mean crystal oscillator? Okay, uh, see uh, crystal oscillator. Uh, okay, uh, this you have been signed out because you are going to be signed in the answer. So no problem. Crystal oscillator. <clears throat> See crystal oscillator, and I still I didn't cover this crystal oscillator. Whenever this time comes, I will, I will explain you. No problem. Whenever you, that, that time comes, I will explain the crystal oscillator because I still I didn't cover the crystal oscillator. Okay. So here. Yeah. Just a question that is. Uh, Okay, one more uh, here. Okay, again, one more that is NMOS. So, what is the NMOS technology? So, it is non uh, NMOS is nothing but See, the meaning of NMOS is not metal, non-metal oxide semiconductor device. See, that is non-metal oxide semiconductor device. Non-metal oxide semi semiconductor device. See, uh, the non-metal uh, oxide semiconductor device, these are the used for uh, chips. So whatever semiconductor devices you, you studied, right? There are three types of state device. One is conductor, another one is insulator, and in between these two, that is a semiconductor. So uh, that Forbidden Gap and all you studied in your PUC level, 10 plus two levels, maybe in that semiconductor. <clears throat> so. Uh, whatever the microprocessor chips are there, they are uh, they are prepared by semiconductor devices only. So for that, all your 8085 uh, microprocessor, they are NMOS, non-metal, non-metallic oxide semiconductor, that is. Non-metallic oxide semiconductor. Purpose they have to use it. Is it okay? That is for non-metallic semiconductor. These are the um, manufacturing the devices, that are microprocessor devices. So in this point also, we have to use it, design and using non-NMOS, non-metallic oxide semiconductor, okay. Okay, okay, fine. So I think my, still, is there any more question? So one question I, I got that is a uh, crystal oscillator. Crystal oscillator, please you wait for that. I'll explain you in later. Because up to now, there's no need of crystal oscillators. Actually, the crystal oscillators we have to use in the clock generator. We'll explain, we'll come to know in that time. Okay, crystal oscillators. 
that is for the on and off that is for the to generating a signals to generating a signals either it may be a uh, at the range of a uh, high means either it may be a, or, uh, it may be a, uh, you have to say you know that uh, uh, clock that signal generates in the digital way and in analog signals in that to make the various of the signals frequency we have to use the uh, signal generator a uh, clock generator okay okay what is that word uh, oh, so, okay crystal oscillators what do you mean by crystal oscillator okay this is about the crystal oscillators we have to use it for it okay fine is that so kindly attend okay is there any meeting okay i think no any text yeah someone are in the audience waiting for to that's fine so i think i cleared all of you right still any doubts if no doubts then i'll move to next topic that is the last topic of first in it yes do their gates used in microprocessor uh what is gates uh, uh, that is 12528 gate in the sense you are asking about uh, all the logical gates like uh, and gate or gate uh, these things you are asking okay logical gates okay and all logical gates yes fine so all these gates are there in the microprocessor so what you will do uh, i think in the uh, first year maybe in diploma in the first year you studied uh, that is basic electronics once uh, in that you are studying all the logical gates operations uh, truth tables so that knowledge you need for the understanding microprocessor that knowledge you need in the unit of four in the unit of five that time all gate uh, knowledge you must and should need please you have to recall it that gate actually the particular gates are not there but that gate uh, uh, understanding concept you must and should have that okay so that is need it means that it's there it's there in the micro person it's there but you come to know all the gates just you have to go through the uh, to table of all the gates then is it okay okay fine yes is there any more questions okay i think we have to covered all the uh, uh, your questions so next can i move to next topic that is the last topic of first in it architecture okay now i'll i'll stop it here you are chatting again if you have any doubts please you 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 text a message no problem fine uh, next we will go to architecture very simple see and uh, i i admitted all the students also no problem everyone is get inside okay fine see <clears throat> uh here just just today's today's i will show you i will show you uh, one of the good historical place building that is Uh, for example, gold gumbas. How many of you heard gold gumbas? I think all of you may recall. Yes, sir. that is present in the uh, Bijapur district. Yes, sir. Yes, right. So just today's all of you imagine. Just I will show you gold gumbas. I am not. I, I didn't show you what is there inside. I am not showing you what is there inside inside the gold gumbas. because uh, that is uh, adil shah he he made a, he made, he made that construct in his kingdom in the century of uh, 12th century uh, uh, that building is still available in the district of bijapur karnataka maybe maybe you have just assume any one of the building for example i am giving a one example for gold gumbas so in the gold gumbas today just i'll show you the building i will not show you whatever there inside i will not tell you whatever history of the gold gumbas just today i'll show you the gold gumbas it means that just i will show you today's 
the architecture of microprocessor just the architecture of microprocessor each and everything architecture functionality we will keep on studying second unit onwards in second units we will keep on studying in the third unit of microprocessor we will keep on studying in the fourth unit we will keep on studying in the fifth unit we will keep on studying and in the sixth unit we will be studying all the clock generator and frequency and in the seventh unit we will be studying all the interrupts and in the eighth unit we will be studying all some other microchips of p j uh, that microprocessor chips okay so like this today just just i'll show you one building which building gold gumbas building that gold gumbas is nothing but which that is a microprocessor frame that's a frame of microprocessor that one we are going to say architecture of microprocessor or we have to say that is a block diagram of architecture that is a block diagram of 8085 architecture okay so in this uh, so many blocks are there means each blocks we call it as a one one stone one one stone of microprocessor chip 8085 microprocessor chip so in that we are going to use all interrupt control signals as yes, already now only you come to know these pins intr pins inta interrupt pins interrupt acknowledgement that is reset by 5.5 to reset by 7.5 and that trap signals so these signals we have to use it for the interrupt control purpose what is the interrupt interrupt is nothing but a <clears throat> sub abnormalities is going to be happen uh, for example if uh, uh, three friends were three friends group were there so in that two friends are discussing with the one of the important topic sometimes sometimes it may happen in our life also so out of three or uh, more than three groups of uh, students as uh, friends uh, maybe a uh, two friends uh, two persons are going to be talk about uh, they are uh, discussing about important things that time suddenly that third person is coming and interfering and he can starts with uh, discussing with some other topic apart from the previous these two persons automatically what it will happen there is some may um, it may you are forgetting whatever uh, previously discussing or it may get disturbance or it may something that abnormality is happened right so in that abnormality conditions is happening in the 8085 microprocessor that time these signals are going to be handled what are those signals those are the thing but interrupt control signals so <coughs> interrupt control signals one of the main block in the architecture of microprocessor so and here that is serial input data serial output data these are just control the manipulation of data in the memory so that is serial input and output along with that memory also is there so and in that you are studied eight uh eight data buses eight lines of data buses that is ad 0 to ad 8 right in the pin diagram so all eight bit internal data buses it is used for to transfer in the data from the serial input and output to the computer your alu to the plugs and that is controlled by if any abnormalities is there that is controlled by the interrupt control okay so that one one eight bit uh, internal data bus we have to use it and here we have to use it uh, arithmetic and logical units for the operations arithmetic and logical we have to use it so for this arithmetic and logical we need a temporary memory for do the uh, operations so that accumulator main memory and the temporary memory we need and these are the flags so minimum 7 to 8 flags we used uh, that flags we will study in the unit of second in the unit of two we will study all the flags but based on that flags with this arithmetic and logical unit is going to be do the full power to do the work so that is with the temporary memory as well as actual, actual memory in means accumulator and this data bus eight bit data bus which is having a some instructions that is whatever you are going to do the program you are going to do the program and that instruction is with the registers so in that registers you have to save the data and that is going to be decoded that is going to be decoded and it is sent to the control unit so in the control unit you send it right 
that is the alu unit uh, resistor unit and control unit these are the alu unit in the microprocessor already you studied in the components and this is the uh, resistor unit and this is the control unit in that control unit you have to use the clock clocks for the control and ready as it is going to be receive or send the data uh, it is a read data write data that is a latch enable uh, address latch enable and serial input 0 serial input 1 so here it is a input and output or memory operations and it is a hold that is a hold the data and reset the data all the pins are the study in the pin configurations so this is all is controlled by timing control of uh, that is control circuit of 885 okay so this clock is you have to use it and and here come to this part uh, come to this part so these are the some registers uh, the name of the registers is h l d e b c w and z so this entire thing you will study in the next uh, next unit immediately second unit all the registers you have to use it see here you don't use the a register you have to start it with b c d e h l but not a a is used for accumulator it is already reserved for this uh, main memory that's what we are not using any sub memory so uh, for that we have started with b c d e and h and l i i so h means it is high l means it is low and b c d e these four registers we have to use a is for accumulator reserved and w and z z is used for zero and w is used for right purpose so these all are we have to use so here in this that is a sp sp is it nothing but stack pointer pointer concept you have to use it right so whenever your controller is going to be point to a particular memory particular data or information that one we have to use the stack pointer and uh, we have to use the program counter program counter is nothing but it is a holding up address program counter pc so in this we have to use this uh, increment or decrement of all these manipulation of the registers those are nothing but b c d e and h is high l is low w is written and z is for zeros okay so this is the memory uh, register manipulations we have to use in this block so in this again uh, we are going to use again two sections with one is address buffer uh, that is all address bus lines a to a a to a 15 as you have been configurations what we explain it now so this this one is going to be we have to study it, address bus buffer so that is a a to a 15 and AD0 to AD7 address bus, these are the data buses. So here, whatever you have to use the directly connected data buses. So uh, whatever we covered, all the pins in the pin configurations, all are available here. You have to check it. You have to check it. Instead of this flags, accumulator, temporary register, and instruction decoder. So these are the manipulation along with automatic operations with flags, temporary memory, and main memory and this decoder is along with the uh, instruction registers so almost all we are covered it here so and this is the one extra that is the sub registers sub registers we have to use it. so that is with the stack pointer and program counter so like this okay just to come to know which pin where we have to set it okay for example if there is a one building construction architecture where the uh, kitchen is there where the hall is there where the bedroom is there where the restroom is there like that one one different different we have to make an architecture so this is the entire architecture of 8085 uh, microprocessor so now one by one we will go through it so this is entire architecture now uh you will come to my notes so here this is the architecture for that each block i have to explain it here so see uh he, this is also a correct and here some of the uh, blocks are uh, missing, clear missing, that's what? This diagram and this diagram are same. Anyone you can use, no problem. Anyone out of these two, anyone you can use, no problem, okay? So here, uh, now explanation also I have to give on you here. Now uh, I will go through these explanations, okay? So after knowing this uh, building, just after knowing this gold compass, now you have to imagine each and everything, how it is going to be working. Now come to the working functionality. So in the 885 microprocessor architecture, all the functional units. So here, accumulator. First, it is, it is a 
accumulator. I'll start with the accumulator. What it will do? So in the accumulator, it is having a eight bit register. Means what? It is a main memory. Actually, the accumulator is the main memory. That is eight bit register used to perform arithmetic and logical input output operations and to load or store operations. It is connected to internal data bus that is uh, arithmetic and logical units that accumulator. Okay. So next one in that ALU you use it ALU right? So this block that is ALU arithmetic and logical unit. What it will do? It is as the name suggests. It performs arithmetic and logical operations like addition, subtraction, uh, all the logical means and or with those are so due to some network issues. Network issues. Yeah. Uh, am I audible or not? <clears throat> Hello. Hello, please. Am I audible or not? Yes. Yes, yes sir. But I got a message here. Uh, due to some network issue, I was going to out of meeting. So please take me in. Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. I will admit it to all again. Okay, some students are waiting. So see, almost uh, one and uh, half hour is completed. Now you are admitting. Please don't. You 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 please remove this kind of habits and keep be inside. Okay, no problem. Yes, I will admit it all. That's fine. So here in the ALU, you have to use all the arithmetic and all the logical operations like uh, and all, uh, XOR, not, and all those things. Arithmetic means addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all those things you have to do. Next is that is a general purpose register. So uh, this one we have to say general purpose registers in that general, so this block, uh, this block, this block we have to say general purpose register. So in this block, so what are registers we have to use it? There are six general purpose registers in 8085. B, E, A, I means that is reserved for accumulator. So B, C, D, E, H, and L, each register can hold the 8-bit data. Purpose we have to use it. Next one, uh, these registers can work in a pair of 16-bit. So all these registers are work on the 16 bit uh, data and the pairing combination is also like B, C, D, E and H, L. So that's what in the pairing way we have to use it. B, C, D, E, H, L. Okay. So next, uh, program counter, PC. Where is PC? Here. Okay, this is the PC and stack pointer. PC is used for uh, it is a 16 bit register used to store the memory address location of the next instruction. Okay. So it will store the next because program counter is which can hold the address of next variable. So here it can hold the memory address location of the next instruction to be executed. So the microprocessor increments the program whenever an instruction is being executed. So uh, the program counter points to the memory address of the next instruction that is going to be executed. How the memory, uh, the program counter pointing to uh, next memory address is going to be pointed, right? That one is works here. How it will work in your pointer concept of C programming. So next uh, comes SP, that is stack pointer. So stack pointer is here, this stack pointer. Uh, in this, it is also a 16 bit uh, register work, works like stack. So means all the data, Either serial input in or serial in out out. So S I S O N, S O S I. Either serial input first in first out or last in last out. Okay, like this it is works that is stack pointer. So here sixteen bit register works like stack, which is always incremented or decremented by two during the push or for operation. Why it is in decremented incremented by two means it's a sixteen bit. If it is eight bit, that is incremented or decremented by one. If it is 16 means we have to use 2 bit. If it is 32 means we have to use 4 bit. If it is 64, then we have to use 8 during this push and pop operations. This one you have to remember. It's the uh, size of the computer. So next one is temporary registers. So it is a, an 8 bit register uh, which holds. So here temporary register block, this one. This one is a temporary register block. It's a 8 bit register. 
uh, which holds the temporary data of arithmetic and logical operations, while whatever the ALU is doing, that arithmetic and logical operator it will holds in the temporary memory. That is with the eight bit data. So next one, a uh, flag register. So totally five flags are there. Just to just to know the name, this working functionality you will study in next unit along with the instructions. So in that flag register, it is an eight bit register having a uh, five one bit flip flops. All of you studied flip flops, you know that. So along with the flip flops, you have to use the flags which holds either zero or one depending upon the result stored in the accumulator. And that's the main memory stored. Okay. So there are sign flag is there, zero flag, auxiliary carry flag, priority flag, and carry flag. Totally five flags are there. In detail, we will explain you in the second unit. Immediately in the next class, I have to start second unit, no problem. I will explain you in that. So all these flags also we have to use. And uh, it is no need, you don't worry. That is the sign flag and the uh, address the data lines of the seven and that zero flag at the data lines of six. And accumulator, uh, Excel carry flag at the data lines of four, and parity flag at the data lines two, and uh, Excel carry flag at the uh, sorry that is a, a carry flags we have to use it for D zero. So this is a particular pin number of eight zero eight five. We have to use it all these carry flags. Okay, explanation I'll give you in a second unit. No problem. So after that, the instruction and register and decoder is block. So instructions registers and uh, instructions decoder. This block, now I'm going to explain. So here, <coughs> it is an eight bit register. When an instruction is fetched from a memory, then it is stored in the instruction. <coughs> then it is stored in the instruction register. So this is instruction register is used for what? To store the data and to do the manipulation of data. And <coughs> the instruction decoder, which can decode, encodes, encoders and decoders are there. Because the human uh, being not understand some code that is only understood by the mem uh, computer memory and it is decoded it, translated it. So for that, we have to use the decoder also in the information present in the instructions register. Okay. So after that, timing and control in it. So next, I will move to this part. Timing and control in it. So what is timing and control in it? Next, we will see that. Uh, it can provide the timing and control signal to the microprocessor to perform operations. So these some following uh, points are that is the sig the control signals means ready signals, read signals, write signals, uh, that is um, address latch enables, and the some status signals are S0, S1, all of these pins are I explained to you in the pin configurations. All these are controlled with the timing control units. Okay, so next one. Uh, interrupt controls. In that interrupt controls, there are five interrupts are there. What are those? Trap interrupt. These are the name of the interrupts. Trap interrupts. Uh, interrupts uh, is there. And uh, that reset interrupt 7.5 to 5.5. So it means that RST 7.5, RST 6.5, and RST 5.5. So these are the, uh, that is interrupt controls. So these interrupt controls, the name suggests it controls the interrupts during the process. Uh, when the microprocessor is executing a main program and whenever an interrupt occurs, the microprocessor shifts the control from the main program to process the incoming request. So up to this request, all these five interrupts are going to be working, uh, acting accordingly. Okay. So then the serial input and output control, the serial input and output control, it controls the serial data communication by using, the, so what are those serial input and output? SID and SOD, this function is already studied. So whatever we have to use it in the architecture. So if there is that SID and SOD, we have to use it. So this one, SID and this block, this block is used for serial input and output control. So next one, that is address buffer and address data buffer. So at the last blocks here, the address buffer, this is the address buffer and this is the address data buffer. The address buffers are the thing, but that's the A, uh, eight data address lines. That is for the pin number uh, 19 to 12, whatever you are going to do the functionality of address bus. Okay. So I that uh, and that data and uh, address buffers. So here also we have to use it all the address lines. These are the 
under this lines, these are the data lines from AD0 to AD7. These are the data lines we have to use it in the uh, architecture of AD085. So here, in the address buffer and address uh, data buffer address, so the content stored in the stack pointer and the program counter is loaded into the address buffer and the address data buffer to communicate with the CPU. The memory and the I.O. chips are connected to these uh, buses. So the CPU can exchange the desired data and the memory and input output chips are over here. Okay, so this is about all the address buffer and data bus. So next, the address bus and data bus. So here you have to use it. Uh, address bus. This is address bus and this is the data bus along with the buffers that the last point in the in this. So here, see, please don't leave the meeting. I'll take attendance. After attendance only, you have to leave the meeting. So at the last point, the data bus carries the data to be stored. So it is carries the data and wherever the info is there, it will send it out to the address lines. Okay, it is a bi-directional because sending and receiving is happened at a single uh, a point of start and end entry, whereas uh, the address bus carries the location to where it should be stored and it is uh, unidirect. It should be stored and unidirectional. So it is used to transfer the data and also it is used for to address uh, input and output devices. Okay, so this is all about your architecture. So address this. So, okay. So here in the architecture, I have to explain all the interrupts. I have to explain all the serial input and output, accumulator I explained, temporary registers I explained, flags. Uh, just I mentioned all the five flags, but explanation I'll give you in the second minute. And this block I explained, so instruction register, decoder explained, all the spatial purpose registers explained, stack pointer, program counter explained, and timing and control block is explained, address buffer and data address buffer explained, and these two lines of address and data address, okay? So this is all about your uh, first unit. Come to the uh, come to the first point. So as per the syllabus. So this is as per the syllabus. So today this one also I have to cover. So today I have to cover these two topics. So this is all hundred percent end of your first unit. As the syllabus, they have to prescribe for uh, four hours in the previous two hours and today's two hours. Four hours I have to complete it in detail clearly. And yesterday's I sent you a PPT. Today's I will send you. Uh, I will send you that uh, notes. So now I'll I'll send you notes. Uh, still I have 15 minute time for class. Now I'll send you notes. Please all of you go through the notes and I'll take attendance. Okay. One second. Uh, uh, first I'll I'll send you notes to you. Please you check check it. How this notes is going to be effective. Okay, fine. So, okay, so at the last, so whatever summary of this unit one, the summary of unit one also I have to cover. Please, you have to check it in the last two in the notes. Uh, is it covered or not? So, by today, I will say 100%. I will complete it. your first unit. Please, all of you go through it and study well. If any doubts, again, we will start in next class interactions. Okay. So, now I will go to WhatsApp. I'll send you uh, my okay, just a second. Uh, <clears throat> SYB take P, SYB take. Okay, I, I saved my notes, first unit notes. Please go through it, all of you.
okay please don't make log out i'll take attendance all of you please don't make log out i'll take attendance once i take attendance then you log out okay please uh, give attendance <clears throat> Mr. Sakib, I mean, please you change your name as per format. You have to mention your name. Okay. First is a division, second, your uh, rule number, third, your name. Like that, you have to mention Sakib. Okay, fine. Uh, dear all students, yes, uh, please, all of you go through the units, uh, notes, unit number one. So clear uh, dictated notes I will give on you, uh, dear all students. Uh, always, always uh, like that. Uh, I will teach you. Okay. So please, am I audible, all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, fine, students. So by today, uh, I have to cover your first unit, the entire syllabus, whatever. Uh, our university is prescribed, that is Pune Slok, Alia Devi, Olka University, Solapur, is prescribed for the unit number one. Uh, all the syllabus I covered as unit number one, please all of you go to it. <coughs> now I will tell you how you are going to do study about this unit. So what you will do? <coughs> Already uh, you are more concentrated on my class, something you have to get it. So after the class, yesterday's class and today's class, you go and study whatever I saved PPT to you. But first you have to scan the presentation, my presentation. Based on my presentation, once you set the frame of the presentation, after that you will go through my notes. Today's whatever I saved notes. Today's whatever I saved notes, 
you all of you go through my notes uh, in that notes clear explanation of each and every corner point i given a text i given a notes all of you go through that notes and after that uh, that ramesh gaunkar books is also available in the library in our college library it is available if anyone you have time you collect that book uh, you have also studied with that book also okay first point my class my lecturing second point my presentation ppt third point my notes whatever i given you today and fourth point textbook these three you have to scan in a well manner nothing is apart from that so ne next once you studied all these four points next you will come to know how much the microprocessor subject is becoming easy for you so in such a way uh, please you tell me is it uh, satisfied to you or uh, if you want to change my passion to uh, take lecturing or uh, if you want some other notes some other text materials you please inform me in such a way also i will be ready to give you but as per my knowledge i will give you 100% filled, filled to the first unit okay you so please all of you go through it study well do hard work along with that do smart work and while studying wherever uh, you have a doubts you are facing a problems facing any difficulties about unit number 1 of microprocessor please any time you approach me you uh, approach me through the phone calls through the text messages through the messenger whatever the way of communication you communicate to me always i am available you i am here only for you people okay please be understand i am here only for you people so i am here to solve your doubts i i am here make you understandable about the microprocessor subjects it's my request don't hesitate to ask the questions always ask the questions and get clarified and you have to uh, get more knowledge about the subject and you have to improve yourself that is my main uh, happiness things about you people okay so this much my said i have to cover and in the next class today is what you will do you have to make a list out of again doubts as how you have to ask it today same way we have to uh, discuss first 10 to 15 minutes about your doubts and later on i will if you are uh, once i cleared all your doubts about uh, your unit number 1 immediately i will start unit number 2 in next class so again i got a next class on wednesday coming wednesday so up to that i'll say bye please keep touch with me about the doubts and keep on studying about my subject whatever doubts arises that time please don't forget me to ask okay so fine uh, thank you uh, always i am very uh, most of all i am very happy about your class because uh, the students are, are doing a good interactions the your way of asking the words your way of getting clarifications so i'm very happy with that please keep on you continuing in my next class also and more number of students want to ask the questions so only few students minimum 10 to 15 students are very active and remaining all students also be active and be ask the questions and get clarified your doubts okay so today's class i'm going to wind up uh, thank you Thank you one and all for attending the class. Keep on attending and show the good strength for my class. Thank you one and all. Now you can leave the meeting.
Thank <laughs> you. 